I'm sure we're about live now. So, okay. so, uh, then, so you can actually just access it right away. So, like, so we're live right now. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to Reform Niger Television once again. My name is Deji. Yesufu, and I'm your host for today's program. Well, I've always been the host until some of my guys that are with me here uh, take up the uh, challenge and do the program. Uh, but I'm broadcasting from Ibadan today, and today I have um, brother, Mr. and Mrs. actually, where I have the Ademolas with me from the United Kingdom. In a few minutes or in a few seconds, they're going to introduce themselves. But Christine, or ABC, um, Ademol, Adebayo is a friend on Facebook. And um, over the years, I, I think for two, three years now, we've been connecting and uh, chatting and um, discussing reform theology together. Okay. I only got uh, the acquaintance of the husband a few days or weeks ago. And um, I have invited them today to come to talk to the Reform Ninja Television about uh, Christianity in the United Kingdom and homeschooling in particular. Okay, so uh, before we go on, um, they are, uh, at Debayos, I want to thank you very much, uh, Sa and Ma, for honoring our um, podium and being our guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Okay, so uh, like I told you before we started, I'm gonna ask uh, our brother, um, that is uh, where he's going to give us his name, Ademola Adebayo, uh, I'm going to ask him to uh, tell us a little about himself, and then the wife will also do the same in a moment. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I'm Adimola Adibayo, as a host, as mentioned, and I was born 54 years ago in London, UK. Um, when I was about five years old, my parents, my dad particularly, took me to Nigeria, and I lived in Lagos for a total of 10 years, and I also lived in Ekiti State for five years, so I lived in Nigeria for 15 years, and um, I decided to come back to the UK in, I think it was in the late 80s, actually, and I've been in the UK since. Um, okay. did, you, did you say 54 years old? Yeah, I'm 54. I was 54. I'm, I'll, I'll be 55 later this year. I was 54 last year, yes. Ah, well, now we, we use the word, I want to I want to I should have mentioned yeah. my age, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because I will ask, oh, and Christians cannot, Christians cannot lie. Uh, well, you don't look it at all. You don't look it at all. Okay, thank you very much. Is that all you want to let us know about yourself, probably what you do, educational okay. background, anything just that is important? Okay. Um, yes. I, work, I work in the IT sector. Um, basically, I deal with business critical applications, um, making sure the applications are running pro properly, doing what they're supposed to do and responding to any issues customers may have relating to these applications. Um, I use it in a number of languages and I've been, I've been in IT now for 24 years, coming up to 25 years actually. And um, being a Christian, I've been a Christian for about 20 years. Um, yeah, I yes, we're, we're, my... we're, going to, we're, we're going to get to the issue of the Christian later. You know, I, okay. I told you about that. Okay, okay, so okay. let's just give Madame the opportunity to okay. for her to introduce herself. And yeah, we'll let me just to... finish. Sorry, let me oh, just I'm, finish. I'm so more. sorry about that. I'm oh, so sorry. sorry about that. Yes. I met my wife um, on the 10th of August, 1991. Yeah, the States. Um, okay. yeah that, that was the day I first set my eyes on her. <laughs> and um, when I saw her, for some reason, I knew that this was the woman I was going to marry. I, That's okay. I, it was just love at first sight and um i'm thankful to the lord we've been married since 97 and wow. it's coming to 25 years and yeah I'm, I'm really thankful the lord has blessed us with five children five boys five boys yeah five boys and then um, yeah wow so, yeah. wow that's excellent wow yeah, so, that's gonna be <laughs> my parents had four boys two girls <laughs> and i know how much trouble we give them <laughs> all right okay okay all right, Auntie uh, Christine, can you just it, tell us about yourself and any other thing? Then before we go into the issue of Christian, how you met both of you met the Lord, individual testimonies. Okay, so I'm uh, Christine uh, Oyebisi um, in the Nigerian circles, I know me as Bisi um, okay. Adebayo. Um, 
uh, been in been in the UK as well since 1989. Uh, having been born here as well, I did live in Nigeria. Lived in Bastak Town and then some other parts of uh, Lagos. Um, and uh, here we are. I can't, I can't really say that I have a profession because obviously <laughs> I'll say I'm a homemaker. Um, uh, in terms of with, uh, with our home education and stuff. So I don't have an official um, occupation in that sense. But um, yeah, yeah that's, and- uh, that, that, that's, an, that's an occupation in itself. I hope <laughs> you will be able so, to educate uh, many of our ladies out there yeah. what it means. I, I always to tell her, I always tell her that she, the work she's doing is more than mine actually. And I, you know, <laughs> she, she, she should be envying me. I should be envying <laughs> She should we be envying me that I'm not doing as much as she's doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We thank God. We thank God. Uh, is that all you want to let? Just yes, I'm not now? telling you my age. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. We, we are, we are, I'm we are just comfortable. Kidding. I'm just yeah. kidding. We're, we're content with uh, Egbon's uh, age. At least we'll, we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see him outside. I will say, ah, guy ah. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't like that. Too. My wife knows. You know, you know, because my wife, her dad is a, a proper Ibadan man. Okay. And the wife, and, and her dad was telling her that make sure that when you wake up, you kneel down for him, you greet him. Yes. And I told my wife, I hope you replied him and told him that I don't like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we thank please, God. Please, brother, please don't put the sign, please, please. All right, okay, favor, that's fine, no, that's fine. Please. All right, okay, um, so gentlemen, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Reform Ninja Television, we are very concerned about the gospel we want to use our platform to tell the world about the lord jesus christ and all of that and one of the parts that i enjoy the most about interviewing christians is asking them how they met the lord jesus christ so we're going to start with our brother uh, would you mind telling us how you uh met the lord and became a christian okay yeah it's a bit of a long story but i'll try and cut it short as much as i can no problem um the first um thing i heard about anything to do with God was from my aunt when I was about six in Nigeria. And what I heard from her was that good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. And even at that such a young age, I knew straight away that I would never ever be match up to what good is. So I kind of, you know, rest that where I'm doomed to go to hell then. That was the kind of uh, thing I had in my mind. But then I began to hear about Christ dying for people's sin. But I didn't quite understand how that applied to me. And then when I was about 19, my teenage years, I was still in Nigeria then. Um, I don't know if you know Tunde Joda. Yes. Yeah, it was at his church. It was called Christ Chapel Church in those days. I don't know what it's called now. But yeah, it was a church still. that I went to. And I did what you call walking down the aisle. Not having a clue of why I walked down the aisle yeah. or what actually led me to walk down the aisle. But I still believe that God began a work in me, even at that time, in spite of the fact that I didn't really have a clue about what I did. And I probably think that was what God used to hold me in my initial period here in the UK, because I came to the UK probably less than a year after. Okay. When I got to the UK, I joined another charismatic church in London, began going there, and um, going there, I began to ask many questions about their doctrines, but I couldn't really pinpoint it. Kept on going. And then the total blessing, quote unquote, came in, I think it was 93, 94. And at that time, I began to really ask questions that I can't see these things in the Bible. And then the internet age came. That was in 95, I first began to get contact with the internet. So I began to search some of these things on the internet to see if there is anyone out there that's questioning some of these doctrines. And I began to see a lot of websites actually criticizing these doctrines way back in the 90s. And then as time went on, I eventually got in contact with a video. It, it was video in those days in 99. And I watched this video about the great apostasy, the lost sign. And they began to show many of these men that I hold there, Copeland, Benihin, many of them uttering doctrine which I can, can, can say boggles the mind. 
these were doctors of demons that they were they were so at that point i took stock and i asked myself am i really a christian because these are the men i follow mm -hmm. and i said if i'm a christian it means i'm probably severely backslidden or maybe i'm not a christian at all so i, I prayed to the lord i said lord help me here i want to know the truth I, and i know these people are not talking about the truth and then i began a battle within the church that I was going to. And eventually it culminated to 2005. That was mid 2000. And by God's special providence, I came across Reformed Doctrines through three different, um, three different sources. I came okay. through Reformed Doctrine. And then I began to take stock. I began to swallow these things in. And my understanding began to develop. And then in 2006, I decided to take my family out of the charismatic movement mm. and we joined the reformed church and so you know in a nutshell i'll probably say that's my testimony but if okay. someone asks me why do you know you're a christian today yeah. the yeah. question i'll ask is that the, the answer my answer will be i know that i'm a christian because jesus christ died for my sins mm. i was a raptured reprobate only deserving of god's justice god will be within his absolute right to cast me alive into the flames of hell and all my hope is in the lord jesus christ he is my lord he is my savior he is the one who died for me and any righteousness that I can lay claim to exclusively comes from the lord jesus christ not of my own and Amen. so praise the lord yeah, that, that's a nutshell yeah thank you thank you sir for that testimony even though i didn't uh expect you are going to say it that way i want to use it as a as a uh, as the, what you just said now, as the answer to the question that we expect from people when we ask them, are you a Christian? How do you know you're a Christian? Because uh, well, in this climb, you ask people, how do you know you're a Christian? They will say, because they encountered an angel. They saw a dream, some of them saw Jesus walking by the road, he shake them, and they fell down, and they woke up to be Christians, okay? You're a Christian because of the gospel, as our brother just said. I hope you don't mind, I put your life only on the screen because I, I want the audience to see you. Okay. okay. So, Sister Kristen, can you tell us um, how you became a Christian? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I think I, I always go way back to growing up in Sele. My parents were uh, strong, avid Sele, uh, Celestial, you know, the Celestial White Garment for the Sele Church of Christ. I was born into that. Um, and uh, we attended the Festac Parish at the time. My dad was, and he still is a big man in there. Um, but I remember with all the incense and all everything going on and all the woolies and things like that, I just can look back now and see that it was God at that time was drawing me by his grace because I would often um, withdraw myself and just look up to the sky and just think, is, is this it? I just had that uh discomfort in my heart in my mind that there is god but this is not it and i used to ask and talk to the clouds you know sure. so to speak um sometimes i had a, a, a certain fear you know of, as if the, the heavens were just going to crush me i suppose maybe that was uh, my conscience telling me that you know i, I am deserving of, of god's judgment and um anyway um Fast forward that um, my cousin one time, he'd left Sele and he said to me, okay, he's gonna take me to this church. That church I think was in a, where was a, a satellite town. Uh, he said, when they make an announcement to come forward, you know, you come forward and follow them and so on. So at the end of this service, big, uh, very excitable service, lots of drumming, dance and everything. They made an altar call. So I went through the, hundreds of others going down the aisle, repeated a sinner's prayer, so to speak, and did all that, and um, very emotional and so on, and uh, carried on going there for the next two years, but still very much, very sinful. Um, mm. I didn't do anything to change uh, my sinfulness in any way, and, and the guilt just got heavier and heavier. Um, so uh, that continued. Um, I came to the UK, um, again, uh, from then on, went to um, kind of like a, this time of, in fact, that was a word of faith church, actually, in, in 
in the satellite town then. And I carried on with that here in the UK. Um, and shortly uh, I met my husband and then we were married. But one thing was that shortly after we were married, my husband was already uncomfortable with these things. Um, mm -hmm. He would often complain. Um, they're always speaking in tongue and falling down because he wasn't really buying this. And more and more and more, he started to complain. We joined the church. I became so-called worship leader. And then by this time, we we're even involved with the so-called prophetic ministries and deliverance oh. and so on and so forth. Um, but my husband had already, I think he'd already come across some people that are already starting to take him through the doctrines of grace mm. and things like that. And um, uh, he eventually took us out and I um, uh, stubble, I was quite stubborn actually and <laughs> resistant. But somehow, you know, like when God's, when God would just have mercy on you, you know, I knew my husband was right. I couldn't put a finger to it. I knew he was right. And then the turning, the, 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 the tide turned when um, we decided to go through, um, actually the way, the way it happened is there's a ministry called Cross TV. Mark Keeler is the name of the pastor. Okay. Now, uh, my husband had been watching him quite a lot because he was a, a, a reformed pastor, a Christian pastor. And I just stumbled on him on one of the Christian TVs, unbeknown to my husband. And then I was uh, suddenly said to him, you know, I've been watching this guy, hey, come on, listen to him. And my husband said, I know him, uh, you know, that's Mark Keeler. You know, because God had already said to do a work through the, the biblical teachings. And then we went through a 16 part series on the sovereignty of God. And that's when it actually wow. then hit me. The sovereignty of God is a vast topic. It's amazing. Um, it covers everything from election, to uh, 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 the depravity of man and everything like that. And my eyes were open that actually, you know, <laughs> If God were to, if I were, thank you, Lord, that you didn't kill me. Because if you were, I would go straight to hell, which is what I deserve. And um, now I know that, you know, my, my whole, whole faith is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yeah. all my righteousness is of him. And um, I can't pinpoint exactly when I would say, yeah, wow, I became a Christian. But um, I know that now, I, you know, by the grace of God, I'm justified um, in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So. Amen. Thank you very much, Ma, for that testimony. In fact, it wasn't only recently, but it was in my seminary that I encountered the whole uh, gamut of the uh, doctrine called the attributes of God, under which you will have the sovereignty of God. And um, it was my lecturer himself, our president, Nick Kennicott, that took us on that aspect. And it was, it was sweet, sweet, sweet. You know, uh, presently, one of my advanced Monterey Adetola is doing a series on it in his own uh, little corner in Facebook. And um, okay. those who may get to see it, I will encourage you to, to look at it. So thank you so very much. We're supposed to go straight to the matter of homeschooling, but um, the comment you made about joining a church uh, got my attention. And uh, we're interested in that also. We're interested in knowing how people came to know the Lord. And then we're interested in church life. So do, do you mind, uh, either of you, uh, I don't know who is going to speak now, uh, telling us about church life. What is it about, the, I mean, what church do you go to and how is it like be, belonging to a local assembly? Out okay, there? Um, yeah. I'll probably, this is our third church actually since we um, came into Reformed Doctrine. Um, the first church we went to was a church, it's currently called Christ Church. Um, it used to be called West Street Baptist Church, but it's now called Christ Church. And when we joined that church, um, the teaching was fairly okay, and the hymns, but the worship was very, very worldly. And um, we were there for about seven and a half years. Wow. But the teaching was beginning to be compromised a bit. So we decided to move to um, another Reformed Baptist Church. And it was we the were, first it, one... It, it, that first one, was it a Reformed Baptist? Or it was well, they claim generally... to be Reformed, but I think I'll probably say they're Evangelical. I won't call them Reformed. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll call them Evangelical, but I won't call them Reformed. Mm. And then we... So, you mark... so we joined a second church, and that is actually slightly further away from us, but we joined, and... But this second church, they don't have a pastor for a start. So okay. we rely on guest speakers all the time and that was you know that that was fine until the lockdown began which was um i think it was march last year and um 
I, I was a deacon there then actually um, at that immediate previous church. And the elder, he decided that he was going to lock down and do the service on Zoom. And I completely objected to that. I said, no, no, no. That time um, God commands in Hebrews chapter 10, 25, that we should never neglect the gathering together. Yes. And that the God has also ordained the means by which we should gather together. And that can be found in Acts chapter two and Acts chapter four, Acts chapter three. It can be found throughout Paul's epistle, how they gathered. And I, the last time I checked, I didn't see anything as Zoom, which is also known <laughs> as by proxy. So I insisted, I said, no, we shouldn't do that. We should still open the church and leave it to the congregation to decide whether they're going to come or not. But closing okay. the church should never come from officers of the church. And he overruled me. So in, in that sense, I decided to resign as a, a deacon. I said, no, nah, I won't serve as an officer of the church. That is I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm not interested in the details of names yeah. or whatever, but I'm interested yeah. in uh, how does a church come to decision making in that matter? Okay. Is it a one man affair like uh, you make seem to be sounding now? Or do you have a situation where bodies of elders sit down, discuss, pray over things, debate over things? I, 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 I mean, was that the condition or what happened? No, he's the only elder, actually, in fairness. And there were two of us who were deacons. Also. Okay. Um, but in the end, I wasn't really consulted. It was a unilateral decision he made. In, On his back. Yeah. Okay, okay. Wow. That, that's so, very sad. so we then moved to our current church. Um, it's got a pastor and it's very, very sound. It's called Bethel Reformed Baptist Church. Excellent church, actually. Very sound church and um i got to know the pastor actually about two three years ago no probably okay. no it's probably coming up to four years ago actually very lovely man of god on fire for the word non-compromised throughout the lockdown he, he opened his home we went there and we, wow. we were having services as normal all of us exercising faith and all that um wow. it's slightly further away it's about 25 kilometers no maybe about wow. 30 kilometers actually from wow. from our home but um, don't be carried away by the distance. In the UK, the roads are very good. It, it barely takes us <laughs> to get there. So yeah, 30 right. kilometers in Nigeria might seem a long distance, but no, it's not. Yes. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Thank you very much. I understand that, uh, um, that this uh, coronavirus situation actually led to breaking up of churches and uh, church splits and all uh, this thing. But I think this is the very first time I'm encountering somebody who experienced it was in the middle of it. You know, I, I from Chris Hansen's program on, I don't know whether you know Chris Hansen, ironsharpensiron.com. Uh, he talked about I'll, a lot I'll of churches. Okay, lot, they talked about a lot of churches split in the US over this question of whether they should gather or not. But I would think that the leadership of this second church we're talking about should know enough to. Uh, uh, apart from getting the eldership to discuss it and probably vote, the, what do they call it? The membership, the, the church congregation should also be able to be involved in such decision-making, but uh, apparently it simply didn't know that. Or was there any other aspect to it that um, uh, maybe we're missing out here? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, let uh, me ask you. Um, not really, I mean, I mean, we can't judge anybody or their motives or their intents, but um, there's a sense of uh, self-preservation, I guess, um, that all of us can have, um, but for the grace of God. And I think at the time when uh, there was a lot of, I mean, if you, if, you, if you had seen the press with the, yes. the, no, yeah. uh, the, uh, the Trump Number. news, of, uh, the newspapers, the news, everything. It's it almost like um, they yeah. said that. People were dying like flies. Yeah, it yeah. was really yeah, yeah, yeah. Even um, though the hospitals are very quiet and things, but that's another. And, and, and one of my perspective was, they did some modeling in the Imperial College, and um, the modeling estimated that if action is not taken, about two hundred million people would die worldwide. That was the modeling they did. But my question to the elder and to people was, who was the presupposition of these people? Who did this yes. modeling? Because that's what we need to look at. Yeah. If we know their presupposition, then it's their presupposition that's going to govern the decisions they make. Yes, yes. And yes, their presupposition is the atheistic worldview, oh, which they have 
which is anti-God, hatred of God. So they will have no qualms in commanding churches to close. Yeah. But my view is the government has no right, no right whatsoever to regulate how we worship God. Yeah. And you see, you know, the, what annoys me most about this is because Reformed Baptists should know firsthand why they should never submit to these kind of things for the government. Yeah. If you should look at Reformed Baptist history, yeah. they know, you know, because Reformed Baptists, this, this is why many Baptists ran to America from Europe because yeah. of the persecution on credo baptism. So they should know firsthand. And I was shocked when I was seeing many of these people uttering. I felt you guys are just wimps as far as I'm concerned. You know, you're hiding sucks. behind trying to preserve your life and trying to say we should do Romans 13. But what about Acts, 5, <laughs> what Acts 5.29? Acts yeah. 5.29 says that we should obey God rather than man. That yeah. overrides Romans 13. And uh, Hebrew 12 also overrides all of them also. That's excellent. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to the issue of homeschooling now. Uh, that, that means there will be some answer to the question. I will probably be asking your wife because I think she's the one that was really concerned. Me. It, but before we even look at it, can you tell us something about your children? I learned you have five, five boys. How do you have five boys? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Tell us something about your children. Okay, maybe my okay. Christine should tell us about okay. or, or yeah. whoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, you've probably interacted with our eldest on YouTube, maybe, or, or at least come across him, uh, Tolua Adebayo. Um, he's Tolua Nini Adebayo, but he's, his name on Facebook. Is oh, okay. He has a YouTube channel? No, no, no. He's but he's on Facebook. I think he oh. might be one of your friends. So no it's very possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Um, he's uh, twenty-one now. Um, he's at university, uh, final year. Um, so, and then we have a uh, 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 another son. Um, he's eighteen. Just turned eighteen. He's doing his A levels. Um, his name is Imale. And then we have uh, Emmy. He's a sixteen-year-old. He's uh, rounding up GCSEs um, at the moment. We have Joshua. Um, Joshua has uh, autism, so he actually attends a special school. Okay. And then we have Micah, our youngest, who is 10. So, okay, um, wow, yeah. wow, that's, that's excellent. <laughs> that's excellent. All right, okay. So, um, sir, can I ask you, sir, how did you come to convictions about um, homeschooling? Um, was it immediate or maybe something? Of course, it's very likely that you grew into such convictions. How did you come to those convictions, sir? Okay, um, it was something that we grew into, actually. Um, oh. My wife and I, we've been musing right from when we had the, our elders that we want to bring them up in the way of the Lord. We want to teach them Christian principles and ideally through home education. But we weren't really sure how we'll go about it. It was something we were both musing between each other. And then we began to agree that this is probably the like where we're going to go. And then I went to the local shop when our eldest, he was four. And then I saw a five-year-old and a six-year-old in a local shop. And believe me, brother, the profanity that was coming out of their lips, I mean, I can't really put it to words. Or a five-year-old and a six-year-old siblings? Yeah, in, in a local shop, yeah. So I got home to my wife and I told my wife, I said, we're gonna need to homeschool our children because if our children goes to this local school, he's gonna pick up some of these languages yeah. and we're not gonna be able to stop it. But another thing is that, I don't know if you have access to the um, results in GCS results in the UK. Now in the UK, black boys, they perform the worst in GCS results. That is a well-known fact. They're the least performers, underachievers. Under, under under and mm -hmm. at the time our eldest was four, my wife was pregnant with our third. No, actually okay. we've already had three. Yeah, we had three children when it was five. So we've got okay. three black boys. And mm -hmm. are we gonna put them in a system that gives them little chance of success? So those were some of the, I mean, the first reason, obviously, is because we want to raise them up in a Christian home. Yes. But there were secondary reasons as well. And those are some of the secondary reasons. And looking back now, we're justified in what we've done because our eldest is in one of the best universities in the world, is, is completing his degree. And I can assure you that if you had gone to the local school where we are 
I don't yeah. think he would have been where he is today. Again, I immediately young, I'm a second son is already getting admission again mm. to one of the best universities in the world. And, and this, all September. of your children were homeschooled for both yeah. their primary and secondary school education. Primary and secondary school yeah. in A levels, they went to 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 A levels to sixth form. Okay. Yeah. But up until wow. secondary school, they were homeschooled. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. So, sir, I'm going to ask you for because I'm having a sense that there are people here in the audience who probably don't even know what homeschooling is. So, sir, can you tell us maybe a brief definition? What is homeschooling? Now, homeschooling is basically when you dedicate that your children will be taught by either yourself or your spouse, or maybe both of you in some cases. And in our case, my wife, she was a recruitment consultant. So she, she, she was in a very well-paid job. But by God's grace, she gave that up so that we can devote our times in bringing up in teaching our children at home. Wow. So it's exclusive teaching our children at home. That's what homeschooling is. Wow, 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 wow. All right. Okay, madam, over to you. Can you yeah. tell us how now you are probably a professor in this thing now? Uh, <laughs> so tell us how did you do it? I want as much as possible information. I said, how did you? How did you get your children, like your boy now that is almost finishing in the university? How did you get him through primary and second boys? So, because I have a boy <laughs> here, you have seen they, they are like, uh, oh no, they are eating their energy. They are, how did you do it? Please, man, just um, as well, much information as you can give us. Yes, please. yes, yes. Well, first of all, all the glory goes to God for all Amen. His providence, for all His grace, Amen. and for the privilege. Amen. We always have to say that. Um, because it can it can turn out any which way without God's grace, but uh, we give we give him all the praise. Um, when we first started inquiring about um, home educating, I was telling a friend of mine, and I didn't know where to begin because I wrote to the local council when uh, Tolua was about two and a half, because I think it was a big, a, big, a huge thing, probably still is in America, but not in the UK as such. But I assumed okay, the UK everybody's homeschooling, so I wrote to the local council asking them, oh, I want to, we would like to homeschool our son and any other children, what should we do? And they wrote me what I would call, and I wish I kept the letter, they wrote me a stinker back. <laughs> really? But, you know, honestly, it was such a terrifying, you know, as if you're about to commit <laughs> the worst atrocity against a child. Do you know what will happen to them if they don't mix with their peers? Do you know how to, how will you even do it? You're not a professional teacher. So I gave up. The idea I'm so, I'm so sorry it. for inter interrupting you. Yeah. And you don't have a copy of that letter? No, that uh, letter? no. It's, prob oh, it's no. probably somewhere. It's one of those things you probably stumble on. I mean, this is what, how many years ago now? Um, <laughs> Close well, to 20. 17 years ago yeah. now, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. um, wow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and this was by the local council. In fact, today, I don't believe they were right like that because anybody <laughs> okay. can go and publish that in the media or put them in trouble. Whoever yes. wrote it would have been having a bad day, so, so to speak. So... Um, so I kind of gave up and we put him in a private uh, local nursery, um, private nursery. And then my friend that I'd mentioned it to long time, she, she, she phoned me once and said, ah, you see, I've heard of this uh, uh, Christian education Europe, you know, the, 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 the sell curriculums for people who want to home educate or something like that, they support homeschoolers. She said, I've invited them to come to my house to talk to them about it. But why don't I redirect them to your house and then I will join you and we'll, because I think by that time I was pregnant with Emmy or something yeah. like that. They were quite heavy. So I said, okay, fine. So the lady came, she laid down all the core curriculums. This is, uh, an, um, this is a Christian education in Europe. They sell what you call pieces or workbooks. She laid down all the core subjects, math, English, uh, social studies, science, word building, and literature. She laid it all out. This is how it works with preschool. Uh, with, uh, yeah, preschool, with reception, and then the, this is how primary school starts and so on. And I was just so that my husband was at work. I phoned him up. I was like, right, this is it. We almost instantly phoned up the school, sent a letter to say, right, this will be his last term. Um, okay. And the school tried to talk us out. They said, okay, why don't, doesn't he do half and half? coming to school and then you do and we were like no no we we'll just pull but, him but out that, and... but, but that also meant that you were going to give up your job yes yes i think at the time i was pregnant anyway i don't even know if i was already on maternity i cannot i can't remember mm. um but it just meant 
it, it just meant I didn't go back. I didn't return to, to, to my job. And so we started it. And there weren't that many, many people doing, doing this, but it's so funny because the very the first uh, evangelical church we attended, as my husband mentioned, yes. lots of families were homeschooling there. Oh. So that was, and using the same curriculum, I mean, this, that's just God's providence. Yes. Even though the pastor, the pastor would take, so this is another thing, uh, discussion for another day. Many people in the church sadly do not support home educators, and even the pastor didn't. And sometimes oh. he would make mention of it negatively, even on the pulpit oh. while he's preaching. Um, but it was a strong, supportive, um, lots of family, about four or five families with lots of children as well. So obviously okay. I, I just naturally gravitated into, into, right. into them. We arranged programs together, monthly programs where the children would meet together, do presentations, research something. Um, at some point we started sports, um, this sports probably every Friday or something like that. Um, and then it just grew from that, um, just starting with very basic maths, English, but the thing with homeschooling, I must mention, is that it's, it's not all just academic. Okay. I believe homeschooling starts from, even when they're younger, you tell them to bring the clothes out of the washing machine, load the washing machine, wash the dishes, sweep the clothes. That's all home, edu home education. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, that, that, that can come with the whole home economics, you know. Um, help with the shopping, go to the shops with me, bring out two bananas and you know that sort of thing um yes. but in terms of the academic official um um uh, work with the mass english and so on um we started off that way um and the organization we're with you, you go through a bit of a training so you don't even have to be a teacher and um, many of these um workbooks also have answer books so if you're struggling you as a parent can quickly go and check how it's done there and then uh, show it to the to the child and and we just started a normal day sometimes by 11 even they finished their school because there's no distraction there's no yeah we do have morning devotions and so on but there's no distraction and then once we've done that then we can then go out or at the time so when they were younger we used to go to different homeschooling activities okay. organized and so on and then we just prodded along like that um mm. and uh, here we are yeah. All right. Um, okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, let me make a little bit of addition. When our eldest, when you got to secondary school age, um, I managed to persuade my wife that um, he will move to a different curriculum because, um, you see, one of the key things one needs to understand is that if you're in a place and you want to utilize a market, you need to understand how that market works and how it will work for you so that you can do things to ensure that you make the best out of it. And I'm sorry to say this on air, but racism is still an issue in the UK and it comes in very subtle ways. Now, homeschooling and the curriculum our sons are using are not the conventional ones. So I was thinking to the future that when it comes to him going to university, they won't be able to compete with the conventional ones this non-conventional one, it will be at the discretion of the university. And they can always tell us that, oh, the space allocated to that is being filled. You know, they can say all those things which you won't be able to fight against. So I told my wife that if it goes through the conventional one, still homeschool, but yes. I mean, it costs me a lot more money. If it goes through that, it will do his GCSE, it's going to do his sixth form, and then it will have the tools that every other person has, and they won't be able to turn him back. Because at that point, you see, as much as they practice it, they don't want it to get to national press. And I told my son, my eldest son, I said, if you get the grades and any good university refuse you, I will go to the university and tell them, well, I trust you want the national press to know about this, that this guy has got three A stars in his A levels. And you say there's no place for him. Well, no problem. I'm not going to have any problem with you. I'm going to national press and then you explain it to them. And I told yeah. my son, they're going to call me back and say, no, we don't want you to go to National Press. So, <laughs> you, you know, so so that was why I pulled him up. And he went on this at one where he did his GCSEs. Yeah, so. He did the GCSE curriculum, did his GCSE, did very well. Not as well as we would have liked, but he did very well. Went on to do, um, to do his sixth form and he smashed his sixth form. Wow. And many people told us, they said, 
he did what many people do in reverse. Many students, they do excellent in their GCSEs, but struggle with their A-levels. Oh. But son, he didn't do so well in his GCSEs, but he did exceptionally well in his A-levels. Wow. I mean, you know, as my wife said earlier, we give all the glory to the Lord. Wow, to him be the wow. wow. So many questions come into my mind now. I want to just go to Facebook. Uh, if you're on Facebook and you have questions for the couple, I know a lot of people just can't even imagine this homeschooling thing in Nigeria. But I know of at least one family that does it and uh, yes, they're I'm, really I'm very committed. The family, yes, yes I, I'm really committed to it. Okay, but uh, before we, I, I, I'm not sure I can see any comment. Uh, Sister Christine, can you see any comment on Facebook? Uh, if there's this, no comment, I'll just go on with no, my I can't, own. No, I can't see any now. All right, okay. So, brother um, uh, Ademola, hmm. the question now, at least for us men, men, you will understand ourselves. Yeah. How do you run a home with one income in the United Kingdom? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now, when, when, um, when my wife um, stopped working, we had to downsize our house and we moved to a cheaper neighborhood. Mm. But not only that, I was probably in the middle of my career in IT then, not as advanced as I am now. So okay. though my income was good compared to many people, it was difficult to maintain a home. So I had to pull a second job, um, which was, you know, two full time wow. jobs basically. So the second job I was doing about 30 hours in addition to my IT job. Yeah, so, so that's what I had wow. to do for, you know, okay. for about four years, wasn't it? And then my wife is sister that she said she's had enough of this that whatever <laughs> I earn for my IT job will manage it to stop this. <laughs> because Thank you, man. funny enough, because I kind of got so used to it. Really? But my wife, she, she wasn't happy with it. She said, no, 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 no I no. leave <laughs> There's this, there's this uh, name I came across. Uh, I wrote an article once. I came across yeah. a term of some Japanese. They said they work so much, they just dropped it. They just oh, dropped oh, it. Oh, there's, oh, a wow. there's a term for, for you guys, something. So, Thank God for Sister Christine. Thank you for having that discernment towards that. I think, I, 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 think yeah, I'm, right. sorry, I just want to add to that. Um, and I suppose we can be open and honest just to be helpful to others. I think partly why we found ourselves in that is the legacy of the health, wealth, prosperity uh, background that we were coming from. We've yeah. gotten ourselves into debt, if I have to be very honest. Oh, and yeah. um, it, was, it was sinking us. If oh. we started off... Um, uh, on the on, on the, the reform. proper straight and narrow reformed, we won't have, I won't have made being, uh, you know godliness with contentment is great gain oh. and just you know being just so you, you needed to pay, pay, off, pay off some some uh, yeah and, and good biblical stuff. stewardship if we had you know if we, and was uh, the fact that we'd come out of that and we realized that you know what here we have these whopping debts you know. Um, we don't want to do any more, put that any more on credit cards or anything like that. That's why yes. my husband then made the decision that, you know, we have to pay these things off in raw cash and how we ended up doing the jobs. Otherwise, I wouldn't actually say that that was entirely uh, to do with homeschooling, mm -hmm. that he had to pull two jobs. But um, because so it, yeah. it may not have been so intense. Yeah, yeah. because, but I mean, if you work in IT... So, so you need to so, transit from one church, I mean, from that church ideology to another, you already have a different mindset to how you handle yes. your resources yes. and the yes. kind of debt you could yes. handle and all of that. You were going to say something, brother Demola? Yeah, what I was saying is that um, I was in a job that pays very well anyway. Mm. So if we're not in those debts, as my wife has said, um, we would have been able to transition easily. Okay, yes, we might have had this few niggling mm. thing, but um, we, I think we would have been okay. And and, and 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 now we give God the praise. We live within our means now. So a brother, a brother got in touch with me in the UK. Also, he told me how the church they were attending. In fact, I think I led them to live in the church because the pastors they told them to use faith to go and get a big house. Yeah. Got a big house. Use yeah. faith to get a big car. They yeah. got it, and they, they were plunged. He said, till the moment he was speaking with me, they were still paying off their debts. I said, yes. what? Yes. I said, what? Oh, no. It's horrible. Anyway, Sister Christine, so your youngest is 10, right? Yes, he is, yes. 
Okay, so how many more years do you have in this home school project? And what is the next thing? <laughs> I always, I always, uh, do you know what? My brain is so scrambled. I asked them to calculate it for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I asked Michael, how long have I got with you? You know, probably another six years. Yes, yeah, another six years, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so you're, you're actually handling about three of them at home right now? Um. Well, they, they the, said, the, Yeah. We, Two, two are already independent. The third, yes, because he's still finishing up his GCSEs, which will be this year. Okay. The fourth goes to a special school, so he's not actually at home. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In that sense. And then, so it's just two of them really at home at the moment. So um, how are the boys? Well, well, I'm going to have to look for Adiba or the, your boy that is on my list. Because I have so many people, I, I yeah. skip over. I think you them. made a comment about him once to me. I think you did. Oh, you made a comment and oh, someone yes. said that's Christine's son or something like yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. I remember that now. I remember yeah. that. I'm going to look for it. But how are how are the boys? Are they like normal children? Or I mean, <laughs> are, they, are, are homeschool children different from children? That I should ask them. Mbo, are you not? Mbo, no, are you they're, normal? They're, 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 they're just like they're your typical eighteen, eighteen. 16 21 yeah they're oh, absolutely that, we are so blessed i we oh we just love them so much we, we love them i mean amazingly though when we take them out to shops a lot of people come and they say your children are well behaved yeah, yeah. and yeah. we just take it for i mean as parents you know your children can never be well behaved we, 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 we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, that, that uh, is, is a testament to the Lord because yeah. every time, I, you know, especially when they were younger, I mean, they don't follow me around so much now, but uh, every time they went to the shops and so on, um, you would always get somebody, whether it's the cashier or somebody standing behind or going, wow, these, you know, young black boys, you know, I mean, they're so comported, they're so, you know, respectful and things like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and um, they're, they're, they're very funny, very lovely young men. Um, yeah. I, 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 I held this to the glory of God. He's a believer. And so, you know, um, he's, he's um, was baptized a few years ago. Our oh. second son is also, uh, God willing, with him to be baptized. Um, and um, so, yeah. That, that's good. Wonderful. Um, Okay, you mentioned, uh, Sister Kristen, you mentioned your father is still alive, yes. I think. Yes. And that he's in the, he's, is he still in the Saleh system? Yes, yes. He is, yeah. very much so, Very yes. much so. In, uh, in, but he's in Nigeria here. Yeah. No, no, he's in, he lives he's in, in London. He's in, he's in London. Yeah. You have Saleh in London. Um, I will, uh, uh, kill and uh, no. <laughs> Saleh is everywhere. <laughs> Not just in London, it's in other cities in the UK as well. Saleh, so, boy. Uh, to be honest. I don't even remember. I think it's a, yeah, maybe they would just go in their mufti and then when they get there, they'll change. I don't know. But yeah, in fact, when I was born, Sele, Elephant and Castle, in London, it would be missing here. That's where I was born. Sorry, I'm speaking vernacular, so I apologize. Yeah, she was not fine now for speaking vernacular in class. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so uh, well, we are going there to uh, the end of our, our interview. If we don't have any comments on Facebook, uh, we'll just uh, wrap, wrap it up. But what is um, uh, Christianity like in the UK right now? Well, what are Christians going through? Um, it was from James White. Uh, first of all, somehow we're going back a little bit, but James White said that in Germany, it's almost a crime to homeschool. Uh, because of the very deep socialist system there. Yes, um, yes. Sister Christine has talked about the letter that uh, the city or somebody wrote her once. You know, but what is it like? What's Christianity like? We know what is happening, but from your own perspective, what's the gospel like in the city of uh, London right now? Well, actually, we don't live in London, actually. We live about 50 kilometers north of London. But I'll, I'll speak about the UK in general. About the UK in general, um, if you come to the UK on a typical Lord's Day, for those who don't know what the Lord's Day, the Lord's Day is Sunday, um, you won't even know that the UK has ever had Christianity, to be honest. It's literally, um, it's painful to admit. The church attendance in the UK, I doubt if it's up to 5% um, every Lord's Day. I don't think it's more than that. 
so you won't even notice. Um, but we live in what is called the Bible Belt in the UK. When I say Bible Belt, um, it's a part of the UK where within within five mile radius, you'll find a church that preaches the gospel. Now, okay, I said earlier that our church is about 30 kilometers away. Well, you know, when you get into reformed theology, you definitely want to go as much as you can. You know, you want a place where there's no compromise whatsoever. So that's why we're going. But even within where we live, there are quite a few churches that still preach the gospel where you get proper Bible preaching. But also, then you also have the charismatics. Now, the charismatics is mainly popular amongst Africans. Mm -hmm. To some extent, West Indians as well. Um, there's quite a number of indigenous um, UK population too that go to charismatic, but it's mainly an African stroke West Indian um, kind of denomination. And you've got loads of that as well. I mean, some of these charismatic churches, when you go into them, you won't even know you're in a church. I mean, you think you're in front of a witch doctor shrine. Actually, wow. some of the things that they say. So there's that as well. And then there's what I call the dead churches in the UK. These are churches that are completely dead. You know, they're just awaiting their funeral. At these churches, you won't hear the gospel. All you're going to hear, the best you're going to hear is about a social gospel of some sort. You know, help the poor, um, the needy, you know, but you won't hear I mean, the about churches. the... Yes. Yeah. Yes. The broad churches. Yeah. Wow. Okay, what about I want you, want you, I want you redeem. I I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Those are the ones I'm talking about. Um, charismatic. For example, in Luton, redeem, redeem. Oh, in, Luton, the... in Luton, where we live, um, there's about six redeems. In Luton, Tangbe, six. And I mean, to be honest, in the UK, I don't think you can go to any major city in the UK or even town that hasn't got a redeemed. And I mentioned town, any town with a population of over 200,000, you'll probably find a redeem. I mean, my son, my son is in university in Belfast. Okay. I flew to Belfast, and guess what? There's a redeemed in Belfast, Northern wow. Ireland. <laughs> you know, when I saw their logo, I was shocked. I told my son, I said, wow, redeemed here? Yeah. He said, yes. I said, well, and then there's, win then, then there's winners, isn't there? Yeah, there's, oh, there's winners as well. And there's winners in Luton, where we live, actually. There's only one single winner, but there's six redeems. Yeah. And Luton is what? It's about a quarter of a million. So it's not even half a million, and there are six redeems. So yeah, they, you have quite a few CSCs in London. Yeah, there's as well. a few CSCs as well. Yeah, and of course Celer and uh, there's even Kerub. Yeah, yeah, Kerub. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, Kerub and Celer have been there for a long time. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow, that's that's very interesting. What, what, what about Nigerian community? How is it yeah. like over? I know that they're around because we've been in the reformed um, circles for coming up close to about 15 years. No, 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 not 15 years. Um, since 2006, so about 14, yeah, almost 15 years. Um, we've not really mingled too much with Nigeria. Most of our friends are obviously from our church background, which happens to be members of the indigenous UK community, which um, is- Yeah, I mean, we used to have lots of friends. Like we were very close friends with many people, even on our same road here, Yeah. Uh, well, just walking distance. But I think uh, the minute when you uh, come away from some of these things, um, people just, um, I don't know, you just lose friends that way, you know. Um, so, but the community is still there, especially in the big cities like your London. You have areas where you just walk in there and you just think, my husband calls it Agbole. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's some parts in London where... Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you, and, you, you know that they're Nigerian. Yeah, and we, we sometimes we go to buy Nigerian food and yeah. stuff like that, but especially pre-corona. Um, uh, so, yeah. All right, okay, maybe we should end with the corona note. How is it like over there now, vaccines, uh, the death rates, uh, lockdown? What's the situation with coronavirus, in, uh, at least in the UK generally? Um, officially, the lockdown is not over yet, officially. However, um, most things are kind of returned to normal. During the very first lockdown, everywhere was almost empty. You could barely see cars. I mean, I've never seen the UK like this before. And I mean, I've been living continuously for almost 35 years. I mean, it was, it was a completely different place. And the tragic thing was that people were kind of like 
looking out for each other, you know, looking out for people who are going to break the lockdown rules and that kind of stuff. So it kind of created this, it was almost kind of like, we almost, I was almost thinking we're, we're leading into a police state, wow. you know, where many of the freedoms we took for granted in the West are literally yeah. being eroded and being taken away. Um, that, that, that's my personal view. Um, should something have been done about the virus? Okay, but a lockdown, I don't agree that, no, the lockdown should have been this extent. Uh, that's, that's um, not I mean, and why do I say that? I, I mean, that's backed up with empirical evidence anyway, because as many people know, Sweden didn't lock down at all. And yet we didn't see them dying like flies on the road. So at least Sweden is a very good case in point. But then I saw your article, brother, on how Oyo State handled it. And the first thing I, I said to myself, I said, good for Shei Makinde for how he handled it in Oyo State. Good for him. I was, I mean, I was 100% supportive of him. I, I, and the other thing that, that I gleaned from that is the first time I've seen a, pol a Nigerian politician thinking about how his decisions will affect the livelihoods of his people. I never ever thought that that was part of the repertoire. And to me, is I mean, actually I'm linked to Shane Mackin, I follow him on LinkedIn now actually, okay. because I, I keep looking at many of the progress he's making. And why? Because for me, I believe that you're in the leadership to serve. And I was really impressed. I mean, I went to read more about him, you know, so, so yeah, but I'm, I, I, I'm not. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of businesses have suffered here. Um, a lot of businesses have closed, um, which is really rather sad. There's been a lot of uh, mental issues, a lot of divorce, and all sorts of things like that. So um, we're not out of the woodworks yet, um, but we trust that um, you know God is working His purpose out. Ultimately, He's, he's um, in control. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Adebayos, for being our guest on. RNTV. We really, really appreciate you. I'm very sure that uh, uh, maybe when next we we'll want you to have you on, uh, you will be able to come on again. And uh, brother Ademola, if there is anything that you feel the Nigerian Christian community you know, want to know from your own perspective, you can always reach out to me. Our platform is available for Christians, uh, Reformed Christians, Nigerian Reformed Christians. Uh, you always have this platform. Thank you very much. I, I don't know if you have some kind of a closing word, maybe for our audience about the gospel, about Christian life, about, uh, national issues, anything. And then we'll just um, what I'll say, and this is one thing I always tell um, any Christian who lives in the UK, especially from Nigerian persuasion, if both of you can afford it, and when I mean, I'm, I'm not saying if you can afford to live luxury lives, I'm thinking if you can cover most of the basic necessities that husband and wife need, and you've got children, don't send your children to school, homeschool them. That would be my personal recommendation. And look at our boys. It's the glory of God where they are today. But the Bible still says that train your child on the way he should go. And when he grows up, he shall never depart from it. When you look at the Pentateuch, God was commanding the children of Israel that they should teach their children these things. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't see anywhere in scripture where God has outsourced that teaching to the state. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what schools are. School is outsource a, a, a parent outsourcing their responsibility to the state. And when the state brings up your child, don't cry. If that child rejects the gospel, don't cry. If that child rebels against the Christian um, heritage that you're trying to bring them up on. Why? Because you've not been consistent with what you call Christianity. And I'm, I know that this is a very hard thing to say, but I have to say because of love, not because I'm trying to be self-righteous. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Demola. Uh, Sister Kristen, if there's a lady, lady out there in the audience or probably that sees this video and is thinking your, how... Your, your, volume is, your volume is quite low. I can barely hear you now. Oh. Is it better now? Is it better yes. now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. If there's somebody out there who is thinking about homeschooling yes. and uh, probably 
uh, should I do it or should I not? Is it something I can do? What will you say to that person to encourage them? Yeah, I, I, I don't like to use that phrase, where there's a will, there's a way, because I don't know where it, where it came from. But um, I do believe, as the scripture says, and, the, and our pastor always reminds us, God says, they that honor me, I will honor. Mm. Whatever we set out to do in the name of the Lord, he will, he's faithful. God is faithful. I mean, uh, I can't tell you that we live a life of luxury, but um, it's well worth it. Um, and, and it's a privilege to be able to spend time with your children, to be with your children, I've learned so much, so many gaps I had in my learning when I was at, in school in Nigeria. You know, they would put science here, art here, commercial here, you, you know, and all that kind of, you know. I've learned so much, lots of laughter, and, you know, just, just the joy of being there uh, for, your, for, you know, for your children, playing with them, um, being a listening ear to them, being that, um, shall I call it, that rocks, you know, stability. You know, yeah. uh, God has given us women that wonderful privilege to do that, and I believe you will see that. You know, with with uh, with Sarah in Scripture, you see. I mean, Sarah must have seen Ishmael mocking um, um, Isaac. If they'd both been at some school somewhere, and I'm not making a dogmatic doctrine out of this, I'm just trying to to, to help us to reason. Um, she may not have seen that about Rebecca. I think the, the women in Scripture you could tell were women who were at home. Um, and uh, by the grace of God, if we if we want to honor the Lord, we're doing this as unto the Lord. He's faithful. He will help us. You know, the first year might be a bit rocky. You're a bit, a bit um, uh, but, uh, and even I would say, don't even worry about that. Yes, it'll be rocky. That's natural. As time goes on, you'll get into a routine. You'll find your own style. Even the, the children sometimes, in fact, with our last born now, I'm not as uh stringent as i was with the older ones i just let him and the things this boy knows i mean anatomy everything he just wanted to learn himself and he just went for it and i just stepped back as long as we're doing the core mass and english for a while i stepped back and then he wanted was interested in the solar system so he went on a you know and then he wanted to learn about uh, geography you know uh, maps and flags of different cultures you know you you will enjoy the ride you know but you'll be there to help them to pursue what they want to learn not 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 fit into a mold or a box somewhere and also shield them from from because um the depravity in the heart of man you know it's things that children get up to on the on the playground as well and in our society ah oh, yeah 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 it is absolutely terrifying lots of people now are pulling their children even non-believers in their droves are pulling their children out of the state school because of the mental issues the children are having to endure on the playground, the bullying. The teachers have no more power. The government taking the power. It's all this snowflake society that we're in that you can't discipline in school. So they just watch children bullied, whatever all sorts going on. You have gun and knife crime problems going on everywhere. So um, I don't know what it's, it's, it's probably not even the same in Nigeria as bad, but you know, I'm sure Nigeria has its own challenges. But it's a privilege to be, be with your own child at home and, and, you know, to encourage them and to love them and nurture them and have dad come home and, you know, be, be the backbone for, for your husband as well. It's a blessing, you know. Um, and, and God is so wonderful. My husband's been having to work from home since March. I absolutely love it. He's home. <laughs> we have lunch together. All, he, he's not fed up of me. I'm sure he's fed up of me. No, I'm not. But no, 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 no. that adds to it. So in a sense, the family is still... We're all still together in a sense. You know, that's home and we're getting on with our thing. So thank you, Brother Demola, Sister Kristen Adebayo, for being a guest of our Reformed Ninja Television. For those of, us, of you who have been watching us, we have been speaking with uh, our brethren from the United Kingdom. They've been talking to us about homeschooling. If you missed it, I'm going to encourage you to watch the video again on uh, Facebook. And um, by Monday, by the grace of God, it should be live also on youtube thank you so very much sas um, i really appreciate you thank I'm you, for having, thank you for having us yes. <laughs> okay. well there as 